Good morning, and welcome to worship at River Glen. I'm Megan Peruca, a member of the church and a recent high school grad. Our scripture passage this morning comes from Exodus 15, where Moses is leading the Israelites out of Egypt, out of slavery. The chapter begins with Moses and his sister Miriam dancing and singing God's praises. I will sing to the Lord, for God has triumphed gloriously. The Lord is my strength and my might. The Lord is my salvation. Like Moses and Miriam, we have gathered for worship to praise God's name and give thanks for God's good works. our King. Come, let us bow at His feet. He has done great things. See what our Savior has done. pray with me. Most holy God, who is like you, majestic in holiness, awesome in splendor, doing wonders among your people, in your steadfast love, you led the people away from the bondage of Egypt and into freedom. You transformed the bitterness of the wilderness 
water into sweetness. Transform the bitterness in our lives into the goodness you have planned for us. Open your word to us today that we would hear your voice and follow your way. Amen. Our scripture reading this morning is from Exodus chapter 15, verses 22 through 27. Hear the word of the Lord. Then Moses ordered Israel to set out from the Red Sea, and they went into the wilderness of Shur. They went for three days in the wilderness and found no water. When they came to Marah, they could not drink the water of Marah because it was bitter. That is why it was called Marah. And the people complained against Moses, saying, What shall we drink? He cried out to the Lord, and the Lord showed him a piece of wood. He threw it into the water, and the water became sweet. There the Lord made for them a statute and an ordinance, and there he put them to the test. He said, If you will listen carefully to the voice of the Lord your God, and do what is right in his sight, and give heed to his commandments, and keep all his statutes, I will not bring upon you any of the diseases I brought upon the Egyptians, for I am the Lord who heals you. Then they came to Elam, where there were 12 springs of water and 70 palm trees, and they camped there by the water. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Good morning, River Glen. My name is Megan Elder. I'm the Director of Children and Family Ministries. Today, I wanted to introduce the story we're going to hear about in the sermon. It's from Exodus 15, when bitter water gets turned into sweet water. Have you ever heard the word bitter? What does bitter mean? It can mean two things. A bitter taste is something strong and kind of a yucky taste that you get in your mouth. Most people don't eat or drink bitter things without adding something to it. We're going to do a little example here. Mila has agreed to be my taste tester to show you what it looks like to eat bitter foods. I have a lemon that has a sour, bitter taste. And I also have a piece of ginger. So let's see how this goes. We haven't tried this yet. All right, are you ready? Tastes yucky. It tastes yucky? Mm -hmm. Okay. Would you eat more of it or no? No. No, you didn't like it? Okay, this is a piece of ginger. Can you try to take a little bite? <laughs> you don't want to try it? One little lick? No. Mm -hmm. oh, you don't like it. <laughs> As you can see, most people don't like that bitter tasting food without something sweet in it. Thank you for trying. Bitter can also mean something else, though. Bitter can mean can be how you feel. Like when someone does something to you that you have a hard time forgiving them, and those bad feelings that you have just keep building and building. That yucky feeling you have is that bitterness, and it's not a good feeling. God does not want us to have those bitterness feelings, because that often means oh, we have... Okay, and often means we haven't fixed a tough situation, like forgiving someone. So in our story today, Moses had led the people of Israel through the desert for three days, and they needed water. When they came upon the water and they tried it, it was bitter, and they complained to Moses. They said, we aren't even going to drink this. This is terrible. It's so bad. We can't drink it. So Moses cried out to God, and he was led to a piece of wood. Moses picked up the piece of wood and threw it into the water, and immediately the water became sweet. God had provided and turned bitterness into something sweet with just an ordinary object. Bitterness can be fixed with love and forgiveness. With God's help, we can heal any bitterness in our hearts so we don't have to have those yucky feelings. So let's take a minute and thank God for all the sweet things that he does provide for us in our life. Pray with me. Dear God, thank you for all the wonderful things that you provide for us on a daily basis. The sweet family members we have, the friendships we have, the ability to go outside and see the sunshine. Lord, we thank you for all these things, and we ask that those things will be treasured up in our heart, and we always remember that you provide sweet things in our lives. In your name we pray. Amen. Let us pray. Dear Lord, as we go through uncertain and challenging times. I pray that you will help us to remember that you are faithful. 
and great is your faithfulness. And that at times you use something very simple and normal in order to take something bitter and make it sweet. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. So our passage today in Exodus 15 is a bit of a roller coaster ride with the Israelites. A little background to this. Before this passage, the Israelites were in Egypt and they were slaves. God sent Moses, who had some trepidation about leading them, but led them anyway, out of captivity. As they were leaving, the Egyptians followed them. And they got to this really wonderful place called the Red Sea. Having been in the Red Sea, I can tell you, it's a beautiful place. I, would, I love spending time there. I'm sure in this case, the Israelites were very worried about what was going to happen. But God provided a way in a very challenging time. He parted the Red Sea for them. And allowed them to pass through so the Egyptians couldn't bring them back to slavery. A couple of thoughts I had here. Number one, what do you think was on the bottom of the Red Sea floor? That would be fascinating. An old boat, sunken treasure. But also, thinking about that particular thing, it's like a reverse water park ride. We're not going to provide you water to slide down something. We're going to take all the water away, push it up towards the side, and let you walk right through. I wonder how that felt. I kind of think most of the Israelites were looking over one shoulder and the other, hoping that that water stayed where it was. This is the first time they had seen something like this. It was new. It was different. They were transversing through uncharted territory, kind of like us. So they get to the other side, and they go into the wilderness. This is uncharted territory to them. They most likely had never been there before. So they were walking for approximately three or, three or so days through the wilderness. And I'm guessing the jugs of water they had probably were getting near empty. And that's going to be a cause for concern. Scientists tell us that the human body can live three to four days without water. So obviously keeping water in their jugs and having it available, especially when you're going through an unfamiliar place in the wilderness, would be very important. As they got to the end of these three days, they came upon a place called Mara. I'm guessing they didn't know that what this place meant. So in Hebrew, the word Mara means bitter. So when they came to the place called Bitter, they actually came on a pool of water. If they knew what that particular name meant, I'm guessing they would have thought that this pool wasn't very good to drink. But not knowing that, I'm guessing they're like us on a really hot day of doing manual labor. The first thing you want is that little glass of cold water that you're going to drink. So I can imagine the Israelites just overjoyed seeing this pool of water. But I can also imagine the heartache as they went down to drink it and it was bitter. And at that point, the Israelites kind of did what we do. They forgot. They forgot that God had just brought them through the Red Sea and part of the waters for them. That he wasn't going to let them down. But when they were faced with a difficulty, they struggled. I think a lot of us in 2020 have really struggled of not knowing what has happened and how we're supposed to live and how we're supposed to be. But I can tell you this, it's really important to remember that God's faithfulness through our whole lives. If we're stuck in our reality and in the moment and have that consume us, we'll forget about all the times that God has taken care of us. All of us have probably wondered during this time why God how exactly how long am I supposed to stay in my house? Why can't I do what I want to do? When will this go back to normal? I think the Israelites kind of felt the same way. 
And it's easy for us as humans to forget the fact that God has led us through any number of things. Moses taking compassion on those people, the people he was called to lead, cried out to the Lord. God did something a little quizzical at that point. He showed Moses a stick, a simple piece of wood, and said, throw that in the water, and it will take care of it. I know of no scientific reason why a stick would be able to take bitter water and turn it into sweet. But God had other plans in mind. I can just imagine Moses not knowing what to do with that and kind of questioning, going, is this really going to work? But he did it anyway. And when he threw the stick in, the water became good to drink. I wonder who was brave enough, foolhardy enough to take that first drink after the stick went in. I'm guessing maybe they made Moses do it because he's the one who tried this whole thing. But someone had to try it. And it turned the bitter water into sweet. God used something very normal, very common, in order to take something from bitter to sweet. And I believe he can do that in our lives as well. Working from home for the last three months, I've enjoyed getting really familiar with my couch and living room and everything that exists there. When I look to my left, out my window, there's a stick kind of thing in my life. There's this planter one of my neighbors hung. It has this amazing bouquet of purple flowers. Then I look over and smile. That particular thing, small as it is, can take almost any bitter moment in my life and turn it to sweet. But I have to let it. So when I look over and I see the beauty that's there, it changes my perspective. This is another way God can change bitter water into sweet. is by using very normal things to change our perspective. So I encourage you to go out to our Facebook page later on today, and you can see this hanging pot of flowers that I'm talking about. And then maybe, just maybe, you can find your own thing, something very normal, very natural, that can change your perspective from bitter to sweet. At this point, it says God created a statue in their midst. And that was primarily to help them remember that once again, he was faithful to them during this process. I can imagine Moses going, that would be kind of interesting to watch God make a statue. That, that would be fascinating to see what he would do. I would love to see that myself. And then God reminded the Israelites, because he didn't want them to forget, that if you listen to my commands, obey me, and do what is right, I will not give you the diseases of the Egyptians. All of those were just ways at that point where God was reminding the Israelites that he has always been with them. But their responsibility was to listen and follow. And when we're worried about ourselves and worried about what we need and what we need to do, it's really hard to listen to someone else. So I believe God said that deliberately to help them remember that he is faithful, that he has brought them through many, many challenges, and he was going to lead them forward. The really nice thing about this is once they had drank the water, once they had remembered what God has done for them, once they had a statue built in their midst, 
it was time to move on. And they moved on to a place named Elam. Elam in the Hebrew means big trees. I, I would like any place that had big trees. I remember going to see redwood trees out in California. Just magnificent big trees. And there's something calming about it. Not only was there big trees in Elam, but there were big pools of water, 12 of them. I can't imagine the elation of the Israelites when they came to a place such as Elam. Our job is to be faithful, to allow little things to change our perspective, and then God will bring us to our Elam, whatever that might be for each one of us. It may not be big trees or 12 pools, but we will get to our Elam. Like I said, it is incredibly important to make sure we're not allowing our own circumstances to dictate what happens. The world of music is always a really great example of this. In the middle 60s, a band made a, an album, took it to the A&R rep at Decca Records. The executive looked at him and said, guitar bands are over. Nah, we're not signing you. That was the Beatles. A young truck driver got kicked out of the Grand Old Opry told to go back to his, his driving ways. That was Elvis Presley. A young band leader was on tour, got booed off the stage because the people actually wanted to see the headliner and not him. That was Jimi Hendrix. And the headliner was the Monkees. None of those people allowed their circumstances to stop them. I cannot encourage you enough to not allow your circumstances to stop you. But put the focus back on who God is and his faithfulness. And remember the little things that he'll use in order to make you turn the bitter into sweet. Charlize Theron is a famous actress but her story is pretty tragic. Growing up in Australia, she saw her mom at age 15 kill her father, abusive father out of self-defense. At 19, she moved to Manhattan to become a dancer. She blew her knee out within a couple months. So she moved to LA to become an actress, couldn't break her way in no matter what she did. She was living on handouts and rolls that she took from meetings. She begged her mom back in Australia to send her a check so she could live. Her mom sent her $500 in Australian check. She took it to the bank to have it cashed. Unfortunately, they wouldn't cash it because it was an out of town check. At that point, the overall Charlie's there on just about lost it. She was screaming and yelling at the bank teller. Little did she know, about seven feet away from her, was a talent agent who was entranced by not only her beauty, but the fact that she was absolutely losing her marbles. Once she was done, the talent agent said, if you want me to represent you, I'd be happy to do that. Charlize Theron told Oprah that if she wouldn't have lost her mind in front of that rapt audience, she wouldn't be where she was today. That really bitter moment when she didn't know if she was going to be able to eat and they would cash her check led to where she is now. And that simple, natural thing of a person standing a few feet next to her changed her whole world. We have the opportunity 
to allow God to change our whole world during this time. It's not easy. It's difficult. It's uncomfortable. No one likes it. But we have the opportunity to remember God's faithfulness and see the little things he's doing to change our perspective. I'm not going to tell you this time that we're in is easy. I'm not going to tell you it's a great time that I'm looking forward to. But I am able to change my perspective and say, I'm thankful that God has been faithful. And I believe he's going to take me through to the next step. And my job is to be on the lookout for the ways that he's trying to use very simple, normal things to change my perspective. We're in a new normal. There's different things going on. Does it mean it's bad? In some ways, very challenging, yes. But in other ways, we're now open to how God wants to change us. So as we go through this week, a couple thoughts. Number one, embrace the new normal. The days you're struggling and you're feeling like, I don't like this new normal. Embrace it instead. That's hard. None of us want to do that. But try anyway. The Israelites were not called to stay in Egypt. They were called to move somewhere else. They were sent through the wilderness for three days to some bitter water. But I always wonder if they would have appreciated Elam as much as they did if they would not have experienced Mara. In many days, it's Mara for us. But it will make Elam even sweeter. Number two, look forward to those little things. Whether that's being involved in the River Glen chalk talk that you see out on Facebook, and brightening someone else's day with a picture of a great chalk drawing, looking at a pot of flowers, taking a dog for a walk. Those little things can change our perspective and allow us to turn bitter into sweet. These days are challenging and difficult. But God has a plan for all of us. He has been faithful through the years, and he will continue to be because he loves you, he cares for you, and he won't let you go.
Let us join our hearts in prayer. Let us pray. Most holy God, in this time of anxiety, fear, and isolation, we come to you for support, encouragement, and direction. We lay our worried minds and troubled souls before you and in your care. We are mindful of your call to listen carefully to your voice, for you are the God of renewal and healing. We do pray for healing, O Lord, for those who are afflicted and have lost loved ones due to, due to the coronavirus, for those in the hospitals and recovering from surgeries, for those who are healing from accidents and other misfortunes, provide your healing touch. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. We pray for this same spirit of healing and wholeness to be upon all medical staff, first responders, clinicians, and caregivers. Be with all of our leaders and instill in them your great wisdom. And be with each of us as well. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Christ, you are our sure foundation, our rescuer, the one who turns what is bitter into sweet. In this same way, we pray for transformation in our lives that you would help us to be the new creations you are calling us to be, and that you would help us to be ushers of your kingdom. Help us to listen for your voice, follow your commandments, and stand firm on your promises of hope and healing. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. And now we pray together the prayer your son Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. And give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. As you go this week to love and serve the Lord, May the grace, mercy, and peace of God the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit sustain and bless you. Amen.